What's up YouTube? This is Mega G Crypto. Today we're going to be taking a look at Ethereum, specifically ETH slash USDT. And I'm going to be doing a complete analysis on Ethereum, which means we'll be taking a look at Ethereum on every single time frame. So if this sounds interesting, let's get started. Before I get started, I would like to point out if you haven't already subscribed, do subscribe to the channel because I do put up videos on a daily basis and these videos are designed specifically to help out the viewers over here. Also, I do have a Patreon and on the Patreon, what I do on the Patreon is every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I analyze coins and I give my members the best entries for any altcoins as well as I teach technical analysis based on my educational video section. And what I do is so far I have about 14 videos out. I'm trying to increase this to about 50 videos on the educational section. And of course, I put out any trade that I get into, I put it out over here. And so far the record is nine, 10 wins and one loss so far. So it's going pretty good. So if you are interested in something like this, uh, you can sign up to the Patreon. It will be in my description below. Now, let's talk about Ethereum. And let's talk about Ethereum on every single time frame, which means we will talk about Ethereum from the monthly, the weekly, the daily, the four hourly, and then finally the hourly. And we'll see what's happening for Ethereum. So let's get started. Now, Ethereum, we have to start off by understanding what Ethereum is currently doing. Ethereum had this massive move up to over $4,000 and it's currently sitting at 2,334. So we understand that Ethereum right now is at a discount. It's lost about 48% of its total value from its all time high. Ethereum has five days and 19 hours remaining for monthly candlestick closure. If you look at the monthly candlestick over here, if it closes with a type of green wick at the bottom and a small body on the top, this is referred to as a bullish hammer candlestick. A bullish hammer candlestick on the monthly, the weekly and the daily determine price direction. If we have a bullish hammer candlestick for Ethereum on the monthly aspect, there's a chance that right now this could be a reversal for Ethereum to make higher moves towards the upside. We're going to try to understand this and we're going to try to use a Fibonacci to better understand the structure to see how far we've dropped down. And this entire video is going to be using the Fibonacci to understand Ethereum's price action. So we can see on Fibonacci that Ethereum right now has come down to the 618. In fact, we have come down here three times, once, twice, and now for the third month, which closes in five days and 19 hours for this candlestick. For the third month, we've hit the 618, which is seen exactly at 1848. And three months in a row, we've had bounces of 1848. On the weekly aspect, we can see a few things as well. On the weekly aspect, we can see that Ethereum has made this type of lower lows, lower high situation. We'll try to understand the situation with a series of lower lows and lower highs. By using a trend line from the top to the bottom, we can see that Ethereum has finally broken above this descending structure towards the downside. Ethereum was making this type of structure respecting this trend line. We've finally broken above the trend line over here. This is suggestive that a change in direction of the trend is going to happen. If I open up the RSI on the daily aspect and examine the RSI on the daily aspect, we can see that Ethereum has a bearish, or sorry, a bullish divergence for Ethereum, where this area is lower and that area is higher. Let me open this, make it look a little better. Where this area on the RSI is lower, while this area is higher. Well, if you look at the actual chart, this area is higher and this area is lower. When you have these type of bullish divergences on the larger time frames, you can expect larger moves because Ethereum has this bullish divergence on the daily aspect, you can anticipate a larger move. And because of this reason, we can see that we also have a trend line break above this descending structure, which is more evidently seen on the daily aspect, but we did have this trend line touching the top over there and touching the bottom over here. And we did break above this trend line as well. Another thing I want to point out is this red line and this blue line over here. This is referred to as the 50 moving average and the 200 SMA, simple moving average. When there's a crossover towards the downside, so when this red line, which is the 50 moving average, crosses over this blue line over here, this is referred to as a death cross. This is a very bearish thing. And most of these death crosses or most of the prices towards the downside happens in anticipation of the death cross. We can see over here that the 200 SMA and the 50 SMA came very close to crossing over. However, because of this impulsive move towards the upside, 
it didn't happen. And when a death cross is negated, that is in fact more bullish than when a death cross actually happens. So when you have a negation of a death cross, like which is what's happening right now over here, where the 50 and the 200 didn't cross over, and in fact it came very close to crossing over, this is in fact a bullish thing for Ethereum. Now, to better understand the levels of where Ethereum currently is, we try to understand the different levels in terms of horizontal resistance and support. And there is ways to do this. And we're going to use our Fibonacci from the top to the bottom of this swing high and this swing low. And we understand the different levels of this Fibonacci. And we mark off the different levels of the Fibonacci. This level is the 50 of the Fibonacci, which is seen over here with this line over here. This level is the 618 of the Fibonacci which is also going to be considered as resistance if we come up to those regions. Other levels is also the 86 and the 1 of the Fibonacci, which is seen over here. These are three levels that I'm marking off right now for Ethereum. If we're capable of breaking above the 50 of the Fibonacci, there's a good chance we will go to the 618 because of the way we're positioned with this really nice double bottom. If we break above the 618 of the Fibonacci, which is seen right over here, if we break above this level of the Fibonacci, there's a good chance we will go towards the 786. And if you break above the 786 of the Fibonacci, this is suggestive that a downtrending structure is no longer happening because the 786 of the Fibonacci is the last line of defense. So if you do break above the 786 and go towards 886 or the 1, this is suggestive that the downtrending structure is no longer happening and we could be having a different structure. And in this case, an ascending structure towards the upside. If I use Fibonacci again from that swing high to this swing low, we can see that BTC has the 618 as well up in this region. And this region is going to be, in fact, a very strong resistance area. So we're going to try to correlate this with this Fibonacci and that Fibonacci and understand these levels on the weekly aspect. On the weekly aspect, we can see that this area is an area of significance. This is the 50 of the Fibonacci from that swing high to this swing low. We can see over here as well that this area is an area of significance and the way we came up to it reacted with the wick we bounced off it over here and then made an impulse to move towards the downside as well as we reacted over here with wicks this area is also an area of significance with a 618 over here is also an area of significance which is the 86 and the one of the fibonacci as seen over here and we can see that this area on the weekly aspect has one two and three wicks of horizontal resistance and a force above the largest swing high to the largest swing low over here is the 618. And we can also see as how we reacted to this area with this wick of the support. And then eventually we did crash underneath it. So these are different areas for Ethereum. And whether or not we will come up to these different zones for Ethereum is to be determined. But what I can tell you is this. I can tell you that there's a pot potential or there is in fact a regular bullish divergence where this area is higher, this area is lower. And on the RSI, this area is lower, that area is higher. We have also broken above a descending structure for Ethereum, which has been quite bearish for Ethereum. And Ethereum has been bearish for a few months because of this re reason. And if you do break above this yellow box, which is at 2,335, and hold this yellow box as support, what we will have for Ethereum is a confirmation of a double bottom. And a double bottom is essentially one a liquidity grab, two liquidity grab, resulting in a double bottom. If we break above, we retest the area. Then we can have a potential move of this double bottom up to the top of the structure, which in fact over here, the top of the structure is the 86 and the one. That swing high to this swing low, which means that we can potentially have a move for Ethereum because of this double bottom from here to there, giving us 26% towards the upside, completely verifying a double bottom and still within our structure, which is a horizontal consolidation towards the side for Ethereum. Now, of course, this depends on Bitcoin and what Bitcoin is doing. If Bitcoin goes up, Ethereum can make these moves. If Bitcoin goes down, Ethereum most likely will not make these moves. So again, this is entirely dependent on BTC and what BTC will do in the coming few weeks to coming few months. All right. So thank you for this. Thank you for watching and um, have a good night, guys. I'm, I'm going to currently I'm going to wait and see as to which direction Ethereum takes. I understand this analysis was a, little, was a little long and it was it was more in detail using the Fibonacci. So again, thank you for watching and have a good one. Bye.